In the last video, we started our work with doing data processing using only higher order methods. And we got to the point where we were reading in this CSV data file that we had. Um, it looks like this. And we found that we had an exception because in this data file, when there aren't values, they are represented as dots. Okay. Now, we need to figure out how to deal with that. In the first rows where this appears, it's in the, let's see, this would be uh, precipitation, snowfall. Oh, in this case, it's in some of the temperature fields. Down here, it's both precipitation and snowfall that are blanked out especially back in the 1800s. Oh, hey, there we go. Here's some days where we have no data at all. Okay, we have to decide how we want to treat this. And there are basically two ways that we could deal with this. One, we could take those lines and read them in um, and do something with the values that aren't present. Uh, another way to do this would be to throw out everything that has a dot in it. Okay. And deciding which one of those is appropriate, really we have to look at our data. Uh, we could use our program over here. What happens if we take our line and we, uh, we filter it so that we remove anything that, so we only keep things, let's see, filter not on contains a comma dot comma. Okay, so anything that has that Oh, I put this in the wrong part. I'm like, what is unhappy about that? Oh yeah. I need it one line up. So before we do our map we filter out all the lines that contain that string. Um, now, it occurs to me that this will potentially not, if we ever have a line that only has a dot in the last field, this won't find it. Well, we can run it real quick. There we go. Now, the question is, was that an okay thing to do? How could we answer that? Well, one way to answer that would be to print out how much data do we still have? And so let's do a, just a print line of data dot length. And we run it. And so I have 33,000 records here. Well, remember this file has 42,000 lines in it. We threw out uh, 9,000 lines when we got rid of the dots. And there is there's quite a few records in here and especially are, are missing precipitation and uh, and and snowfall. Okay, those seem to be the fields that are missing the most. The you know, the temperatures are generally there, though we have seen a few where it is missing temperatures. Okay, so back to the drawing board. Um, this is probably a little bit too strong. We should probably instead do something here where we will keep only the things that uh, we either need to make it so that we can keep records that are missing data or we make it so um, that we only throw out maybe some of the data that's missing uh, elements in it so for example maybe I keep things that are missing precipitation and snow but if anything is missing any of these temperature values I'm going to throw that out. Uh, I'm actually potentially willing to to go with that. Uh, how would we store that though? Okay, what would we do for precipitation and snow if they aren't uh, if they aren't there? Well, um, because precipitation and snow should only be positive values, and this is actually one advantage here. We basically have we have two options here. One would be that we make these options. So I could make this an option of double and an option of double. Uh, and, and then these would just remain as, as regular doubles. Uh, dealing with those options might get a little bit tedious in other places, but the precipitation and snow 
can only be non-negative values. So just giving a negative one value on those days would probably work for us. Uh, let's write a little method here. Uh, that will convert to a double, so def to double uh, or neg. Sure. It takes s, which is a string, and it returns a double to us. And that double, we will try to do s dot to double, else we will give back minus one. Nope, sorry, catch. This isn't an if. So catch a case for number format exception. Okay. Now for the snowfall which is, or the precipitation in the snowfall, instead of calling dot to double, I'm going to do my to double or neg here. And I need to somehow throw out anything where P7, P8, and P9 are dots because I've kind of decided there aren't that many days for those I'm willing to throw out the things where we didn't for some reason they didn't record a temperature and we saw there were some days where they didn't have any data at all those days aren't useful to us so so I'm okay with throwing those out the question is how to do it because just doing a filter here before the map that's going to be a little bit challenging figuring out whether it's the right fields and map always produces a value and so if I were to just map uh, I always get a temp data this is a place where flat map, which is another one of the higher order methods and one you're probably less familiar with, works well. Because flat map, as you can see from this error, doesn't expect just a temp data, it expects a sequence of temp data, because I'm doing this on, on a sequence, which means that I can return an empty sequence. So I can say if uh, p sub 7 is equal to just a dot, or p sub 8 is equal to just a dot, or p sub 9 is equal to just a dot, then I'm going to give back an empty sequence. Else, I'm going to give back a sequence that contains our one temp data. Okay, and that way, if any of those is true, it will go down this branch, and so we shouldn't get an exception for 7, 8, or 9. It runs, it completed, we didn't get a number format exception, and we now have 41,000 data points out of our potential 42,000. So we only threw away a few hundred data points. I'm happy with that. Okay, so we've now loaded in our data. We've seen the use of map, filter, and flat map in here. Uh, for getting our data just set up so that we can start doing analysis with it. Come back and we'll do analysis on this data in uh, uh, next video.